This video has been produced by the UK National Agency for the 2017 Erasmus Plus Call for Applications. This video will provide UK organisations with an overview of the opportunities for schools under Key Action 1. Whether you're a teacher or support a staff in a school or college, Key Action 1 is the funding strand that can apply to you and your organisation. Key Action 1 is all about mobility, which would usually mean that individuals spend time abroad. Mobility projects can cover a variety of continual professional development opportunities. Overall, projects last from between one to two years, but for individuals or groups of staff, this could be as small as activity from two days up to two months in duration. Mobility projects are transnational, so all activities do need to take place in another country, but I'll explain more about that in a second. Every Key Action 1 project will be very different. This is because each project should help to address a current need in the school that is applying. But to give you a flavour of the types of things that we have approved in the past or funded, I've put three, screen, uh, three examples on the screen for you now. So the first example is a school that wanted to introduce a second modern foreign language into their school. So to support that, this school applied for Erasmus Plus funding to send teachers to language training courses in Germany. And the idea was that staff through an intensive language course would upskill in German that would support them to be able to introduce uh, German as a second option for a language study in their school. The second example is a SEN specialist school in the UK. They receive funding to go over to Denmark to observe outdoor learning because this is something they deemed that school in Denmark to be a specialist at. And in addition to those two examples, in the past we've also sent senior members of staff in their school to conferences tackling school dropouts. These are just three examples of the types of things we funded. They're not the limited examples. Um, and I'm going to move on now to talk about the priorities of the programme. So Key Action 1 does have some objectives. And these are the objectives that have been set by the European Commission. So the objectives of Key Action 1 can be found on pages 31 to 32 of the programme guide. So it's really important that you ensure that your project idea is relevant to the programme objectives. And below you can pause the screen if you'd like to now to read some examples. However, the examples on the screen are not the only ones available. So do check out pages 31 to 32 of the 2017 programme guide. Key Action 1 school mobility opportunities are not limited to teaching staff. Staff in charge of school education, so that could include teaching and non-teaching, including school managers and heads. So anyone who is in charge of school education that has a working relation with the sending schools um, is eligible, as well as other educational staff such as school inspectors, school counsellors and psychologists. So anyone that is involved in the strategic development of the sending school or in the school, the actual delivery of lessons um, will be eligible participants. So this could also include teaching assistants. Now there are two types of opportunities that projects can apply for, and projects can also combine a mixture of the two opportunities. So the first activity are teaching assignments. These activities allow teachers or other school education staff to teach at a partner school abroad. The second option available is staff training. So that's two options here, so structured courses or training events abroad. These are to support the professional development of teachers, school leaders and other educational staff. Or you can apply for job shadowing and this provides an opportunity for teachers, school leaders or other school staff to spend a period of time abroad in a partner school or another relevant organisation that's active in the field of school education. All these activities are an opportunity for teachers to gain competencies in addressing the needs of pupils um, in their school and to help improve school policy and curriculum delivery. So 
So under Erasmus+, Plus, there are two types of countries that are categorised. They are program countries and partner countries. Now, partner countries tend to be the rest of the world, and unfortunately, for Key Action 1 for Schools, they're not eligible destinations. So the only countries where participants can go to are the current ones on the screen. So these are called program countries. So these are the countries that can take part fully um, in the Erasmus Plus program, and these are the destinations where your school staff could go as part of their Key Action 1 application. I should note that unfortunately, domestic travel is not eligible, so staff cannot undertake their activities in the UK. So all activities must be transnational, so that means people need to go from the UK elsewhere. Activities from the UK to the UK are not permitted. So all projects are structured around a one or a two year cycle. So projects need to identify a need. They then, if they're approved, they get the funding. They then deliver the mobility, so the staff go away. And then once they come back, the idea is that they start implementing, implementing change in their organization. And then they measure how that's affected their school or their institution. And then they submit a final report to us at the end of their project life cycle. So this is why the projects are much more than just the mobilities. So whilst the mobility activities take can last from two days to two months, projects are structured around a one or a two year length of time. Now there's two options that schools um, or people that can apply by. The first is that schools make an application for funding for themselves. So that would be one school making their own application to send their own staff abroad. The second option would be where a school coordination body in the UK makes a funding application on behalf of a number of schools as a consortium. Schools themselves cannot act as consortium coordinators on behalf of other schools. So the consortium approach is intended to burden and make the application process easier. The school coordinating body is responsible for the management, budgeting and reporting related to the project application. So as I said before, schools cannot act as a consortium coordinator on behalf of other schools. Equally, staff from the con coordinating consortium organisation itself are not eligible to undertake mobility activities themselves. They should just have an organisational role and it will be the staff from the schools in their consortium that will go on the mobilities. In the case of a project presented by a national mobility consortium, all members of the consortium cluster, so all the schools, must be based and registered in the United Kingdom, and they do need to be identified at the time of applying for a grant. So the schools in the consortium must have a clear organisational link to the organisation that's acting as a consortium coordinator. And there's no cap on the number of schools that a consortium lead can include in that application, as long as they have a pre-existing demonstrable responsibility for the schools they include in their bid. On the screen now, you can see a list of organisations that we would potentially deem eligible to act as a consortium lead, so an organisation that could apply on behalf of a cluster of schools. However, with the changing status of the UK education system, um, this list is not exhaustive. So if you're unsure as to what your organisation will be eligible for, um, please do contact us as soon as possible. We can then let you know if your organisation will be eligible to apply for a consortium application on behalf of a number of schools. So for each person that travels abroad, your organisation is eligible to claim the following funds. So you can claim organisational support, so this is to support the overall implementation of the project and the preparation of people before they go, and also the validation of learning outcomes. You can also request a travel grant, so this is to help contribute to the travel costs for that person to travel to their venue of activity and back again. In addition to this, you can also request individual support. This is based on a daily rate, depending on the country in which the person travels to. And this is to support things like hotels, subsistence, 
um, and also if there's any accompanying persons that need to attend in order to make the participant um, able to take part in the activity. In addition to the above categories, if someone is enrolling in a private course via an independent course provider, you can also request course fees. So this is a daily rate of 70 euros to help support the enrollment into private courses. Then in addition to that, if the participant has additional needs due to disability, then you can also claim additional costs um, to enable them to take part. This could be as simple as the requirement to re uh, rent a, a mobility scooter to support the participant to be mobile during the placement, right up to the request for additional funds to support an accompanying person to travel with them to enable them to also take part in the program. So in order for your school to take part in Erasmus+, Plus, you do need to submit an application. And we do have lots of support on our website about how to apply, how to complete that application form and write a good bid. So we also have a follow-up video to this which explains how to complete the application form. But just to make you aware that your project applications will be assessed against the following three criteria: The relevance of the project, the quality of the project design and implementation, and impact and dissemination. So the deadline for applications in 2017 is Thursday the 2nd of February and that's at 11 o'clock in the UK time, 11 o'clock a.m. So applications must be submitted online via the application form by 11 o'clock UK time and that translates to 12 noon Brussels time and that must be on the date of the deadline. Now that deadline is set by the European Commission and is applicable across the whole of Europe. So all countries across Europe will be applying by 12 noon Brussels time on that day. An application that's submitted one second after 11 o'clock in the morning will de be deemed ineligible, so we highly advise that schools submit that application well in advance of the deadline. It also provides schools with additional time to be able to contact the UK National Agency for support if they face any difficulties submitting the application form online. So you might be wondering, how do I find out about courses and job shadowing opportunities? Well, there's a, a site that the European Commission has created that can support you with your application. And this is the School Education Gateway. So you can access the School Education Gateway by going to www.schooleducationgateway.eu. And the idea of the site is to connect UK schools and schools across the whole of Europe with European level policy. But of most relevance to someone applying for Erasmus+, Plus, they have three tools. There's a course catalogue, and this is where independent course providers can advertise, and they are courses that might be eligible for you to apply for funding to attend under Key Action 1. So please note these courses are not official Erasmus+, Plus courses. Um, any course provider can advertise on there. So it's a good place to find out what's out there, but we do recommend that you do your research to make sure that it's a suitable and reputable provider. In addition to the course catalogue, there's a mobility opportunity section, and this is where schools can advertise if they're looking to visit a school or they are willing to host. So even if you're not at the stage where you want to submit your own application to a, for funding, you may wish to offer an opportunity for people to visit you. So because Key Action 1, each school has to apply for their own funding, a school overseas could actually apply for funding but use that funding to visit you. So it's a good way to internationalise your school without having to apply for your own funding or send teachers overseas. So the course catalogue and the mobility opportunities are the sections that are most relevant to someone thinking about applying for Key Action 1. But in addition to that, there's also a strategic partnerships function. So this is where schools can advertise project ideas for this Key Action 2 part of Erasmus+, Plus, or they can look to join pre-existing projects. In addition to the Erasmus Plus tools, there's also a newly launched Teachers Academy. So you might find some interesting online-based learning courses already available for you for free on that site. So the UK National Agency is here to provide you with support should you wish to apply for funding. We will have on, the, on our How to Apply 
page, we'll have a guidance document for Key Action 1, and that will be available and take you through how to apply. We're also going to be running question and answer webinar in January and February before the deadline. And in addition to the webinars, we also have a second video on our YouTube channel, which takes you through the application form step by step. So it's highly advised to use our Key Action 1 application guide document, as well as our step-by-step -step YouTube video to support you in completing your application. Please do check out our website. All of the resources can be found on the Apply for Funding um, part of the uh, website. So go to Apply for Funding and then School Staff Mobility Projects, and there you'll find all the support that you require. It's also recommended to sign up to our newsletter to find out about the latest deadlines. And do engage with us through our social media channels. So we're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Storify. And in addition to that, we also have a dedicated Erasmus Plus helpline. So you can contact us from 8.30 till 5.30 on usual working days, Monday to Friday. Unfortunately, that excludes bank holidays. Or you can drop us an email at erasmusplus.inquiries at britishcouncil.org. Thank you for watching this video and good luck with any future applications you may choose to make.